So for those of you that don't know I am, I'm Mike Payne and I've been with Nutribates now for around two and a half years. But I'm going to take you all the way back to where it first started and tell you a little story about my first capture and a few more on the trigger. So when I first joined Nutribates, I actually opted for some BFM and the trigger as well. And I was split between the two on which one I was going to use. But when I opened the BFM, I knew I'm going to get cracking with this. And I really wanted to start a campaign using it. So the first two months, that's all I used. And I had really good success. But in my ear at the same time, my fellow uh, team Nutribates team member, Rob Gaynor, he was on at me about getting the trigger out and using the trigger. So after reluctantly swapping, I went out on a work overnight to one of the club waters on the Portsmouth district ticket. See this club water, it's very unique in the fact that you have to do a watercraft draw every single day. You have to be in the car park, you pick the, the tokens out of the hat and then you decide where you're going to fish. Now, the water itself is only around four acres in size and it's solid in weed. There's a lot of weed around and finding clear spots, it, it's quite a little niche to find them in there. Uh, there is some like, nice, nice clean margin spots, but the, the spots in open water, they're really hard to come by. Well, I'd done the draw and I ended up right down the other end of the lake and I spotted some fish rolling right in the far corner and I only brought my nine foot rods with me. And what I was trying to do was side flick the rods underneath the sort of canopy of the trees down into the corner to get to where the fish had showed. And on my second or third cast, I actually miscast and the line came out at a completely different angle. But I'm in the mentality of never waste a cast. So I feathered the line down, felt the lead go in, expecting a really soft drop and nothing to be there. And it actually went in an extra two foot and went down with a crack. Now, if I ever investigate in that spot, it turns out it was only maybe this sort of size, size of an unhooking mat, as we like to say. Um, and in that particular water, it's really renowned for casting like an ounce lead out and just pinging the trotties out and keep it nice and quiet because you're on a 24 hour rule you don't really want to like scare the life out of them but i thought do you know what i found this area i'm going to investigate it and i'm going to make sure that that spot is critical after going about it making maybe 10 casts and getting a few funny looks from other members of the club um, i was content with the spot so what i opted to do was fish a d-rig with a trigger pop-up but i had the trigger pop-up actually um, plugged out with putty. So it sat like a wafter on top of my D-rig. I, I firmed the hook up, I made the cast. It took me seven casts to get it on the spot, but I didn't stop until I got that perfect drop because I knew it was there to be had. It just took a little bit more precision than what I would normally have to do. But I worked at it and I made sure it was on there. I got the crack down, the firm popped up. That gave me the visual marker. I then catapulted a kilo of trigger over the top of it. Again, in that water, not many people will stand and catapult a kilo of boilies out. They'll maybe put 10 or 15 freebies out around a choddy that's gone into the weed. But I knew that I was on a prime spot and I wanted to give them a bit of food. So the rods were set for the night. I was sat behind the rods and my friend, uh, a couple of my friends actually, who also fish on the club water, one of them was on a little bit of a blanking spree at this point. I, I've actually called him up and said, I'm going to have one tonight. And he, uh, he turned around on the phone to me, he says, not a chance, I'm on about 18 nights out of fish, there's no chance you're coming back after 18 months and banging one on your first night. Three hours later, on my left hand rod absolutely whacked around. After an extensive battle and it dragging me through the pads and weeding me up, I could see the massive shoulders of this sutton strained fish breaking through the weed and I just slipped the net underneath it. And it resulted in a cracking fish, which still currently stands as my mirror PB, at 38 pound, 12 ounces, and it was absolutely unreal. Obviously, I got straight on the phone to my friend, rang him up, mate, you need to wind your rods in and come and, uh, come and photo this fish for me. It's an absolute chunk, it's a lovely carp. And you know, fair play to the guy, because he done that for me. So that was the start of me using trigger on a regular basis, but I was now torn between the two, between the trigger and the BFM, because no matter what I was putting out, I was absolutely doing the damage on it. So it was just whatever I fancied in that session and whatever I wanted to use, I was using with the absolute utmost confidence. Um, as I say, I had multiple captures on both baits, but another memorable capture on the trigger itself. This time I wasn't fishing whole trigger. It was on Frimley Pit 1. And you know, for, the, for those that know the air venue, it's got some really old carp in it. And after speaking to a few of the members, you know, understanding what had been happening because I've been away for a little while on my job, um, I decided that I was going to heavily bait a spot and I went about crumbing up five kilos of trigger, adding some hemp to it, 
uh, some maize to it and then giving it a really healthy serving of the trigger liquid food and the trigger liquid booster. So it made a nice big stodge. I actually put the full bucket out on one spot and it didn't take long to get a spot rocking as I had two fish off it that night. To be fair, on the first night there were smaller fish and I did question whether I needed to come into a bit of deeper water, but I stuck to my guns, I stuck over the bait and on the second night, the rod ripped off again and I ended up with the biggest common in Frimley Pit 1, a common known as a silver common. And I think that went £35, 14 ounces, something in that vicinity. But again, that regardless, it's a mega old fish. It is an absolute dinosaur and it is a stunning creature. So moving on from that, I've recently just got back from France where I got a mega opportunity to go out with Ali Amidi, Bobby Zamora and the guys from the OMC team to witness the filming of the Grand Fishing Adventure. Um, and after many discussions with the owner Rich Hughes of Nutribits, I didn't know what to take out there with me. I was umming and ahhing on a few different things. And in the end, off the advice of Rich, I actually took the trigger pineapple and butyric. Um, and it paid dividends as I had carp all the way up to 48 pound, 12 ounces. And again, another mega fish caught and another bait in the locker that I have got 100% confidence in. So in this day and age, I know a lot of carp anglers, they get hooked on one bait, they don't really like to stray away and they don't like change. But I've proved that no matter what range you get from Nutribaits, you can absolutely smash it out of the park.